Welcome to City Talk, a weekly conversation produced by the City of Waco to inform you about city events and projects. Each week, we'll bring you interesting topics with city staff and community leaders to highlight how Waco is an exciting place to live and work. Welcome to City Talk. I'm Christine Rothenbush, Marketing and Development Specialist at the Texas Ranger Hall of Fame and Museum in Waco. With me are guests Byron Johnson, Executive Director, and Audrey Ladd, Education Programs Manager. The year 2020 and the COVID-19 pandemic brought many challenges to museums, and we were no exception. Many of our supporters have asked us how we are doing and what the future holds. Let's begin. Hi, welcome. Well, good to be here today. Yes, thank you. Yeah. So we have definitely had our share of ups and downs. But before we get to that, um, Byron, would you mind just giving us a quick overview um, of the history of the museum, uh, its founding, and how it's important to Texas? Sure. Well, back in 1964, they knew I-35 was going to come through Waco. And the city wanted some kind of a high-quality attraction to get people off the freeway and into Waco. So they made an arrangement with the state of Texas to place a state museum here representing the Texas Rangers Law Enforcement Agency. And over the years, over the succeeding 50 years, it's been an enormous success. We've had more than 4.5 million people go through the building. Um, it has become known internationally and ranked among the higher uh, tourism attractions in Central Texas. So I think the investment and the time that they spent doing that was pretty well spent. Mm -hmm. And you even have a little fun story about um, a Russian uh, person that came to visit one time when Bush was uh, president, I believe. Yes, we had um, we had a group of bankers from what then was the Russian Republic of Kyrgyzstan that came through here. And they were up in the Dallas area. The State Department uh, wanted to know what they wanted to do. And they said, we want to be taken to Waco to see the Texas Rangers. So they came down here and uh, without a whole lot of notice. And so we had a representative from a country that we weren't really even sure we knew where it was uh, come through the museum. But since that date, we have had international visitors literally from all over the world, uh, very heavily from Germany, France, Great Britain, mm -hmm. Australia, areas like that. COVID made a dent in that because of a lack of international travel, but we're starting to see it come back again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so there have been a lot of stories in the newspapers about various museums during COVID and their closures, um, how they're struggling with museum attendance or uh, finances and different things like that. Um, now, we have bounced back. Um, can you tell our viewers a little bit more about how the museum overcame this unusual time and what we did? Well, we were watching things very carefully, and it was obvious that COVID was not going to go away. So uh, we got together with a number of the other museums in Waco. We have a very uh, tight Museum Association of Waco group, and we worked with them to try to develop some protocols on what we would do, how we would clean our facilities, how we would make sure that guests and visitors were safe here. Then we articulated with the City County Health Department and the state to do it, so it was a kind of a complex picture. But we came out overall with a plan to do this that uh, has kept us very, very safe. We did not have any of the staff members at the museum that came down with COVID. We did not have any re um, reports or any hot spots at the museum of COVID infections or anything else. So we thank our lucky stars that uh, most of that seemed to work. And the other museums in Waco were pretty much the same way. They escaped a lot of the uh, impact that we had in other parts of the country. So Waco as a community has a reputation of coming together in difficult times, and I think it held up through this as well. Mm -hmm. Now, Audrey, speaking of unusual times, <laughs> uh, a lot changed for school children, school teachers, and even museum educators such as yourself. Can you tell um, our viewers a little bit about the initiatives that we began during this uh, time and then some of the educational outreach that has continued that our teachers and students and enthusiasts would enjoy. 
Yes, of course. So one of the most important things that we did when COVID started was increase our social media presence. With our doors shut or even after we reopened and not as many people could travel, we really wanted to make sure that we were still talking to our visitors. We were still educating people about the Texas Rangers. Um, And one of the things that we did, we created new activities uh, that are social media based. Uh, One is Guess the Artifact. And in the morning, we post a very zoomed in picture of an artifact, a specific little detail. And we give um, followers time to guess what they think it is. And then later in the day, we post the full image of the artifact, let everyone know what it actually is, and also give a little bit of information about it. The other one that we started with the pandemic was journal prompts. And the great thing about this one is we have an amazing collection of photographs that we don't always get to show off to people. Mm -hmm. And the journal prompts were a great way to be able to do that. So we post a picture and we come up with usually about three journal prompts, tell people a little bit about the picture and just let them have some fun talking about what they think is happening, what the people in the picture may be thinking. And it ended up being a really great idea. We get a lot of fun comments from it. And because those two were so successful, we ended up putting them on our website as well. Um, We have a web page dedicated to Guess the Artifact, and then we also have created the journal prompts as worksheets that are downloadable for free from our website. And this allows even more people to be able to experience that new content. Mm -hmm. And the great thing about the journal prompts is they're also great for teachers. Um, A lot of times teachers need a quick thing to start their day, a little bit of a warm up. These they can go online and download for free, makes it really easy for them to get a little bit of history to start their day with. Teachers, as we know, had a pretty rough year. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to make sure that uh, we as a museum helped them out as much as we could. And one of the things we did is we increased the amount of lesson plans that we have downloadable for free on the website. We have 10-minute lesson plans. And we made sure they were nice and short, made it easy for the teachers. Everything they need is right there. Um, We also created um, new webinars. So with COVID, a lot of students wouldn't be able to go on field trips. Um, Yes. And so this was a way that we could kind of bring the field trip to them virtually. They could attend whether they're in classrooms or still at home. um, And they could learn about that Texas Ranger history and connect with us as a museum. Mm -hmm. Another thing that we did is increase the videos that we make. Mm -hmm. So we created a new talk show that's Ask the Ranger Museum. Uh, We also created a series called uh, Storytime with Audrey, which is where I read uh, different storytime books that are Texas related or Western related. Um, to kind of help pass time if you uh, have children at home during the pandemic. And then we also created quite a few new episodes of our, um, just a moment, sorry, (laughs) Discovering the Legends episodes. Uh, We created, our collections team was hard at work creating new exhibits, and we have a lot of great new episodes of um, Discovering the Legend about those exhibits. Yeah, they really took advantage of the uh, limited number of visitors to really get in there and update and refresh and make the exhibits new. And and they just look amazing. If anybody hasn't seen the museum in a little bit, I I highly recommend coming. Definitely. Um, In 2023, the Texas Rangers will celebrate their 200th anniversary. The Bicentennial will be memorable. We're hoping for a statewide, national, maybe even international celebrations. Byron and Audrey, can you both speak about the museum, the Rangers, what we've already accomplished for the Bicentennial, and then what our hopes, plans, and dreams are for the future with the event? Sure. Well, we started uh, in 2005 when we realized that this 200th anniversary was coming up. And we went to the state and asked that they make us essentially the steward for the historical activities portion of this. And we started out by trying to figure out what was necessary for the facility. And probably one of the major things we did was to raise the funds and build a new research center or library uh, at the museum called the Tobin and Ann Armstrong Texas Ranger Research Center. Since that time, there have probably been somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 to 50 books at least published out of the resources of that library. Uh, we have two to 3,000 people a year that contact us from genealogists to people writing Discovery and Channel and History Channel programs to other things like that, and it's been an enormous success. Uh, so that's, that's worked out. 
One of the other things we did um, in 2010 was to add an education center to the museum. It's used by the Texas Rangers as a training facility for law enforcement and related people all over the state. But when it's not in use as that, it's used in the region uh, to have uh, nonprofit organizations that are involved with all sorts of public service programs come in and use that space as a high-tech classroom to instruct their people and get them ready for the kind of service delivery they do. Mm -hmm. And that ranges in everything from training people to use car safety seats to uh, you name it. I mean, just about anything uh, that's, that's out there we've done in there. So it's been very successful. We have a lot of other things planned for the bicentennial, but one of the major things we're going to be shifting to is coordinating with groups all over the state so they can commemorate it at their libraries, their museums, anything that touches on this. So it's going to be a busy time for us over about the next year mm -hmm. and a half. And we have a publications program uh, that's recognizing the, the books that are coming out now, not just those 40 that we've had throughout the yes. years of the museum. Now, uh, there is an organization called Texas Rangers 2023 that's going to be working on some galas across the street. They'll be or across the street, across uh, Texas. There'll be one in Waco as part of the series of events and uh, commemorations that goes on. But one of the things we wanted to do is leave something of lasting value. So we created a program to recognize books and research that were done on the Texas Rangers of quality and value. We expected to have maybe one or two good books in that by the Bicentennial, and now we're up to 15 hardcover books by both uh, university and commercial presses. One of them was a New York Times bestseller. One of them sold out within about 90 days, and one of them was a top-selling book on uh, American culture on Amazon in Germany, believe it or not. It's a German language book on the Texas Rangers. So it has surprised and exceeded anything we expected from it. That's awesome. And Audrey, you want to speak a little bit about some of the activities and things too? Yeah, one of the things that I'm really excited about is that we actually have a full set of Texas Ranger badges that are being made by one of the official badge makers in Texas. And we're going to be able to get those in and put those on exhibit for the Bicentennial. I think it's going to be a really cool thing. Um, the badges change a little bit based on what rank you are, and this will be the first time we have a full set. So I'm really excited about that. And also kind of going back to what Byron said, with we really want this to be a statewide event. Mm -hmm. um, we want all the historical organizations in Texas to get involved, whether that's something small like a book club or a little exhibit or a full program, bringing a presenter down to talk to their communities about Texas Ranger history. We really want this to be statewide, and I think it'll be really great. And they can contact the museum if they need help with organizing or... Yes, they can. Anything like that. Okay. Um, and then, Byron, um, the museum is also looking at an expansion for the building and exhibits as a potential for the bicentennial year. Um, why is this important? And if you wanted to become involved, how could you? Well, this last year, we used some time that became available to us because of the pandemic to do a comprehensive master plan for the facility. It being uh, 54 years old now and having as many people as, come, as has come through it, it's getting a little long in the tooth in some sections. Actually, it was designed for about 20,000 visitors a year, and just before the pandemic, we were doing almost 100,000 visitors a year. So That's it's quite a difference. <laughs> yeah, five times what it was designed for. We, are, we also haven't stopped in terms of the number of artifacts and materials that are being uh, both donated to the museum and put on a long term loan to the point where we have a lot of things that we would like to show and use to illustrate that history that we can't get out on display because we simply don't have the space for it. We're trying to rotate it, uh, rotate those items on and off display, but eventually we're going to need more space. Then there are visitor amenities we'd like to have. There have been some discussions about the possibility of getting some food service in. There have been uh, discussions about expanding the size of our gift shop, which sells things literally all 
all over the world. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we are we're really trying to figure out what it should become in the future. It's going to be a major project. It's going to take some years. I wish we could get it done by the bicentennial, but I don't think that's going to be possible. But we can get it kicked off to the point where we know where we're going and what's what's to be done. Right now, the Waco City Council, which acts as our trustee to the state of Texas for the museum, the museum is essentially a de facto state museum, and with the city acting as trustee, they are considering what's in the comprehensive plan, and we'll come up with a final uh, agreement in terms of what we'll do in the future. Then we'll get into a phase of fundraising for that. We expect that it'll be a public-private partnership with both the governmental and private sector contributors to it. And then we hope to have it set up for the, shall we say, for the uh, third century of the Texas Rangers. Yeah, quite a thing to think about, three centuries, you know? Definitely. Um, Audrey, is there anything you would like to add? No, I think that just about covers it. Thank you for having us. Yeah, I'm glad you were here, and I hope our viewers enjoyed it and learned a little bit more about the museum. And check us out at texasranger.org. We hope you enjoyed City Talk, a production of the City of Waco. Catch this program on local radio stations on Sunday mornings at 6.30 a.m. Find the podcast on your favorite podcast streaming service by searching City of Waco or view it online at wccc.tv.